Hello, folks. Tonight, I'm going after the Crab Nebula. And I was having issues with another target. Not sure why, but my autofocus was having issues on the Tadpole Nebula. Every night, whenever I try to capture, there's something in that nebula that screws up my autofocus. I, I, I think I spotted the anomaly, and it's just not worth dealing with. I've tried... On many nights to capture that thing, and I give up on it. Don't ask me why, but I've I've switched to the crab, and I think I'm only going to capture two hours of each narrow band filter. This is a pretty bright object, so I don't think I need to go 15 or 16 hours. I'm going to see what I can get with six hours, and then after this, I think I'm going to switch back to broadband. The moon is starting to go away, and I've already captured my HA. And let's take a look at what uh, oxygen is looking like. Okay, so it, I mean, it's a small target, that's for sure. A uh, bigger scope would be better. And my mean readout is 739. Excuse me, my nodes are stuffed up. I was just outside. It's 27 degrees out there. It snowed on top of my equipment. Terrible. But it, it was, it's cold enough where it could just blow right off, though, below freezing. <laughs> But it's clear now, at least. Guiding 1.02. It's it's breezy out there. I'm sure it's still over 10 miles an hour. It was up to 18 miles an hour earlier. So I'm pretty sure that's why we're seeing this, this rockiness. I'm just hoping my stars look okay. Uh, uh, let's go back and, and, and just take a look. Let's see how the stars look. Yeah, I don't know. Hard to tell. It's hard to tell in this program, but I'll see when I stack them all. The wind is going to be dying down as the night goes on, so hopefully it'll die down sooner than later. And let me show you one more thing. Uh, this is what my HA data looked like. Two hours of... I've already stacked it. Just quickly in Deep Sky Stacker, I'll do the final stack in Picks in Sight. But it looks pretty cool. I had to crop it. Uh, but it's a cool looking thing. And it's a colorful looking nebula too. So uh, I'll probably see you when I'm finished with this. Okay, thanks for listening. I'll be back. Okay, after the second night of capturing data, I wound up capturing two hours of HA, two hours of oxygen, and two hours of sulfur. And this is what the HA looks like. That's what the oxygen looks like. And that's what the sulfur looks like. Now, I decided not to do a background extraction on any of these. So, and I didn't actually like how the Hubble palette was looking with this. So I, I decided to put HA in red, uh, oxygen in green, and sulfur in blue. And uh, just did a, a straight combine like that, HOS, and that's what the combine looked like. Uh, it looked a little worse. I had to run a, I did, a, I think, an automatic background extraction after the combine. And this is what it, it looked like. And uh, after I, I tried some processing, I ended up with something like that. You know, I darkened the background. I, uh, I don't think I uh, increased the saturation of the colors. I like the, how the colors turned out right off the bat. But uh, it, it, you know, when you have lots of data in each filter, processing isn't that hard. I didn't have to do a whole lot to this, so I, I was pretty content with how this came out. I mean, I don't, it, it's kind of a small target, so I, it, it was hard to really get in and get sharp edges on that. It's just too, too small. But, you know, if you don't do zoom in on it too much, it, it looks pretty good. And if I, uh, if I, uh, I made up my screen background, it looks pretty good. Natural size in the screen background. And uh, I want to show you one more thing. Stick around because it was so windy last night. I want to show you what happened. I lost about a half hour of data. I'll be back. Okay, uh, I want to show you what happened while I was imaging last night. And I, I can only, I mean... I, I'm blamed on, on a gust of wind, but I, I can't say for sure. I, I just assume it is because it was windy last night. But uh, this is frame 32 
of my oxygen, and I'm using B-Link to scroll through. Now let's go to frame 33. Okay, that's okay. It probably did a dither, and that's why it shifted. Now let's, uh, or maybe not, maybe the wind is starting to have an impact. Let's go to frame 34. Whoa, now you can see it. It looks blurry. The stars are stretched. Let's go to frame 35. I don't know how well you can see this. Frame 35. Uh-oh. Where's it going? Oh, man. Frame 36. Frame 37. Frame 38. It's just, I don't know what happened with it. The, the gust of wind and it screwed things up. PhD 2 is confused. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. Frame 39. No better. It's just drifting away. Frame 40. It's <laughs> bizarre. I, I, well, I'm not sure if anybody has uh, any explanation, but uh, lucky I caught it. Because if I had gone to sleep, all of my data at this point would have been ruined. But how I fixed it, I just, uh, you know, I'm still inside my house. All I did was I closed down Sequence Generator Pro, restarted it, reran the plate solve, and there we go, right it, it's right back in the center again, and I didn't have any other issue the rest of the night. So I just thought that was interesting. Uh, I'd never seen that happen before. So, okay.